Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope I am seen and heard and I welcome you all to the uh, webinar. So, what is this uh, you know, uh, vision we are talking about? So, 2047 is celebrating 100 years of in independence. And uh, we have just finished in you know, celebrating the 70th, 78th year of independence yesterday. And we thought it is uh, the right occasion to look forward. And we're not actually looking forward two years or five years ahead. We are actually looking forward to more than 23 years ahead to our 100th year of independence, which is 2047. Because I feel uh, the topic which we're going to talk about requires a lot of work. And unless we have a clear vision where we are going, we meaning all the healthcare leaders and all those who have any influence, either in a hospital or at a national level, should start thinking about this. I've reached out to several nursing leaders and uh, we are in the process of formulating a questionnaire which will be uh, circulating with all the healthcare leaders which also includes nursing leaders and trying to get their uh, opinion about how we should go about this. So this is just a start, a beginning and this webinar which is being attended by a small group of people uh, will be the you know, uh, the sort of having the preview to the whole thing. So we are committed to this and I want to do this as long as I have the energy to do so. Next slide, please. So I want to ask uh, Dr. Nitya, who is the CEO and who has actually the practical experience of going to various hospitals and training. Being a founder, I do a lot of strate strategizing and also I do a little bit of training, but it is more like a visiting, you know, um, sort of professor training. But Nitya is hands-on and she goes to each and every training and meets the nurses, uh, finds what barriers and challenges and tries to overcome. So she's got, you know, the sort of front line or on the ground feel of what is going to happen. And uh, recently, she was invited to give a, a talk about future readiness, and she took up this topic because of that I know that is something very close to her heart. And she's got very strong opinions about how nurses are treated currently and how this should change. So it'll be very interesting to listen to her. And um, I would you know uh, sort of first ask her uh, what you know are her thoughts about this topic. And then as we go along, I'll be asking a few uh, questions and she'll be answering. So Nitya, can you uh, sort of uh, take up and tell what you think about this topic? Good afternoon, everybody. I thank you all for joining us. As Dr. Pari said, though it's a small group, I think we are all you're all a part of the journey uh, where which we're going to discuss now. So I'm so glad that you're all uh, you all had uh, time to spend with us today. So thank you so much for joining. I thank Dr. Pari for giving this warm introduction. And uh, yeah, we are going to talk about Vision 2047 for nursing in India. What are we going to do for the nurses? Uh, what is the vision for the nurses 23 years down the line? So this topic is indeed very close to my heart, as Dr. Pari mentioned. I have been in this field for the last six to seven years. I mean, more than that, but, uh, you know, into active training in the last six to seven years where I was interacting with the nurses. And I saw the, the daily the challenges they face and, uh, and the immense strength and the resilience and dedication they have. In spite of the challenges, they work with so much of dedication, so much of resilience and strength. So I think it's very important. See, they don't work just as uh, caregivers or, you know, healthcare providers. They are true guardians of life. They work for the patients. So, but do they have any recognition? They have little recognition. And do they have the support? Again, I don't think they have the support. So I believe that the nurses have to be empowered. Empowerment not just should be a goal. Empowerment just mean just having a goal to empower the nurses. But it is an absolute necessity. It's an absolute necessity to recognize them, to support them, to empower them so that they can really do, give contribute to the healthcare uh, world. And empowering our nurses, it goes uh, beyond handing them over the responsibility. Just not that, when I say empowering nurses, just giving them responsibilities to uh, work in this um, healthcare setup. But it is to truly recognizing the worth, recognizing the worth and uh, the potential they have 
and uh, recognizing the essential role they play in the healthcare uh, of, in the, of our nation. And normally we say that uh, nurses are the backbone of our of healthcare, but I think they are the heart. If the heart stops, life stops. So, so also, if the nurses are not supported, if they're not given the recognition, they have, our healthcare will suffer. And uh, also, uh, they, mean that, uh, they are the strength and the vitality of healthcare. So that's very, very important to support them and recognize them. So I, have, I very strongly feel about this. We have to support them. And if we don't support them, our entire system will support uh, suffer. But if we support them and recognize them for the worth and the value, our healthcare system is going to be transformed. We can see the transformation in a healthcare setup if we uh, recognize them and support the nurses. So this is what I think should is going to be our vision. And I'm very happy that I was given this opportunity to share my vision to, with all of you today. I am very gra grateful for that. So let me now uh, share the vision. I have to... Yeah. So let us look at the vision 2047 for nurses in India. So I think, I mean, it may sound very, you know, uh, far-fetched or, you know, maybe a utopian task to achieve all this. But I think, I think we should have a vision very high, sky high, so that we can reach somewhere and we can, you know, try and achieve it. But as Dr. Pari said, as a collective, you know, uh, attempt by all of us, we should try and achieve this. I think they should be, the nurses should be respected as equals, uh, equals to doctors, and they should have a competitive pay, which will, you know, and which will, you know, sort of value their service they provide. And they should take up leadership role, not just healthcare providers, and they should have a good work-life balance, and they should be provided with world-class uh, education. So let me talk about each uh, goal, which I'm talking about, each vision. So as I said, we should envision that the nurses should be respected equally to doctors for the critical role and the, uh, the vital uh, role they play in the healthcare system and the expertise they provide for the uh, patient care. <clears throat> and competitive pay is very, very important. The nurses should, <clears throat> sorry, should make sure that they receive a fair compensation for the vital role in the healthcare system. And if you give them higher remuneration, competitive pay, and uh, if they have job satisfaction here, I'm sure our nurses will remain in India, will remain with us, and not try and go abroad looking for greener pastures, for better opportunities, and uh, better uh, for job satisfaction or better pay. So they will definitely be with us if we recognize their worth and uh, provide them with a competitive pay. Then leadership role. Again, I think the nursing profession they they should not just be caregivers, but they should become key. They should play play, uh, play a key role in becoming uh, uh, the I mean, healthcare policy makers. They should be driving reforms and innovations. So that should be the role of the nurses, not just caregivers. The next, I think, work life balance should be so good for the nurses that nursing uh, the profession should be looked upon. Like everybody wants to become doctors, they want to become engineers because it looks very glamorous. But nobody wants to become nurse. When you talk about nursing profession, they think it's not very glamorous. But we have to make it look glamorous, and because they have very good life, work life balance, and it should be made one of the sought after professions. So that's what is my one of my visions. And of course, world class education is very important. We have to aspire to make our nursing education and specialized training, uh, training in India, world-class, the best in the world, so that it attracts students. Students from outside other parts of the world should come to India for training, not we should, from India should not be going abroad for training. So that should be at the level of our education and training in India. Okay, uh, okay I think that's, that's a great vision. And I really liked your take on telling that uh, nurses are the heart rather than the backbone. I think, uh, you know, that's a very, very uh, fantastic way of looking at nurses. And as you say, uh, if the nurses are not going to be there and tomorrow, the hospital will come to a standstill. So I think it's better to call them the heart of the hospital. And uh, you have highlighted the vision and I'm sure there are many other opinions about vision. But this is something which uh, at Skills for Med, we looked at a lot of other uh, vision statements and we thought we'll highlight these uh, five today. And... Um, Next, you know, I want you to look at you know, what are the current challenges. Usually when you want to make a change, 
it's always better to look at where we are now and then you know, um, look at the future. So can you sort of uh, explain what are the current challenges nurses face day-to-day uh, -day in the work workplace today? Yeah, I think that's very, very important. So uh, for un unless we know what is the challenges we face now, so we'll not be able to change it and achieve our vision. So the current challenges we face are workforce shortage, the skills gap, and work uh, work environment problem. So what are the uh, what is the work shortage uh, problem? There's a uh, there's high demand of nurses in India and globally. So because there's demand abroad, people from here move over. So there is you know people constantly keep moving, and there is increase in turnover. So that is uh, one of the major uh, challenges. Next is skills gap. Though the nurses get trained, there's a lot of skills gap in the best practices and evidence-based practice. So though they uh, apply whatever they learn in the practice, there is a gap in the uh, in applying the best practices in, uh, in the healthcare setting. And another important thing is lack of specialized and advanced care. So we just had a, a meeting this morning with the hospital in uh, Kerala for uh, labor room nursing training. So they were saying that a few years ago, they had very well experienced uh, nurses who were experienced for five, six years experience are so good at, at their work. But currently, the problem is the challenge they are facing is they don't have nurses who are experienced and so all novice nurses who have to be trained on the job. So that is why they came to us for training. So that is a, another problem. And uh, the skills gap is because of that. And uh, the nurses are so averse to technology use. So now with the, the advancing technology with the uh, advance with the you know coming in of AI, I think we have to be integrated. Technology has to be integrated as a part of our uh, practice. Only then we can uh, bridge the skills gap. The next is that the work environment, long hours. Nurses, because of nursing shortage, they work for long hours. They have to extend their shifts from one shift to another. They keep on working and they're highly stressed. And they're so engrossed in their work and their day-to-day, -day, you know, this uh, rush and this uh, long hours of work. They don't have time for, you know, thinking about their professional development, development of career. So they just stagnate in the hospital, so, you know, and uh, there's no lack of, uh, there is lack of professional uh, growth and opportunities for them. So that is the current challenge. So what are we doing now? Currently, we are just fighting the waves. We are just focusing on addressing the current challenge. We have to do that. We have to see if we have, these are the problems, these are the gaps. We have to try and fill the gaps and do the needful. But what is more important is look forward, look at the future what, and make the nurses future ready. So for that, what do we have to do? We have to have a plan and we have to envision our goals. So again, here it is not only us, it is the, you know, all the nursing leaders, all the leaders of, the, of our nation should work towards this, have a plan and goal to uh, achieve the uh, our uh, vision. Yeah, again, thank you so much. I think uh, there was uh, one important you know, point there about the work environment I would like to highlight. So, you know, this is, uh, we, we get used to it. I think we get desensitized. So as we are working in the hospital day in and day out and show the nurses also get, uh, you know, the leaders also get desensitized. And, um, my daughter, who is a PhD student, you know, he, she was actually visiting one of the uh, well-known tertiary hospitals in Chennai. And she came so you know, uh, upset, asking why is, you know, are the nurses you know, being treated like this? And why are they you know, having such uh, stressful environment? And she actually wrote a LinkedIn post about it. No, I was not aware of it. And um, I read the post and that is when I felt, my God, we have just got desensitized to the whole thing. We're not even thinking about it. So it's now people like a third person, I mean, who are totally new to the healthcare environment was, are able to identify this. So the, I think it's very, very you know, important point it touched upon. So we're talking about visions and goals and all that, and nothing will work unless you have some strategic initiatives. Again, we, we may not be able to you know, position right now to start or implement any of the initiatives, but at least can you tell us what strategic initiatives might help us to move from where we are now to the goal we are envisioning? Yeah, I think I'll do that. Yeah, it's very, very important. There could be uh, you know many strategies, I mean, actually, uh, which, which we have to follow to reach our vision or goal. But then I think I will focus on four important things which I think will help us to... Uh, achieve our vision. So one is education reforms. 
The other is training opportunities for the nurses and technology integration and professional development. So I just like to uh, you know talk on each uh, topic. Coming to educational reforms, it is it is a collective thing of the government, the Nursing Council of India, and the nursing college which have to bring about this educational reforms. How can they do it? They have to update the nursing curriculum, and they have to make sure they promote evidence base and best practices into the curriculum so that when, when the nurses come out, they come out with uh, you know they they know what is best practice and how to and they with a good skill. And also this leadership training, leadership. If you look at it. It comes into the, the nurses think about it only when they become seniors. They join the thing, they just keep working as staff nurses. Later down the line, a few years down the line, when they come to the senior level, then they think of you know becoming leaders. Even that, it only comes with seniority. I think leadership training should start in the nursing colleges. Nursing colleges should train them, tell them what how to become leaders. That should that culture should be inculcated in the nursing colleges, so that when they come into the into practice when they become nurses, they start thinking about it early. They're not just staff nurses or just not caregivers. That they also have to be leaders, you know, and play a major role in policy making. All that uh, you know that knowledge should be given in nursing colleges. And of course, it's very important to include emerging technology into the educational reforms. The next is uh, talking about training platform. Again, it is the healthcare organizations and training centers should provide healthcare uh, platform for the nurses. So when it comes to the healthcare organization, they should implement regular in-service training programs. So every, every hospital says that they don't have time, they're so busy, they don't want to train the nurses. But it's very important the nurses are trained just to upskill them. They already uh, they have they come with skills, upskill them, update them so that they are up to date and they you know they provide be better and uh, quality uh, patient care. And also training centers they should conduct they should have on site training and online training. On site training by through way of workshops that will help to enhance this. So again, healthcare organization as as such they may not be able to do it. They should get the help of the training centers to do this to enhance the skill and knowledge of the staff. Then, of course, online training is very, very important, which so, the, so that the nurses we can update themselves, uh, you know, uh, even when they're not at work, so they have through webinars and through courses. So online learning is also very, very important to update themselves and the knowledge and the skills. And coming to technology integration is <clears throat> very, very important to collaborate with the uh, technology companies so that they provide advanced tools like AI. Nowadays, AI is a, is an in thing now. So that AI-driven tools are very, very useful. So they will help to uh, the nurses to uh, automate the routine nursing tasks so that they can they can focus on direct patient care. So many other things you can do with AI tools. So this is one most important thing is automating the routine tasks so that they'll be able to provide better direct patient care. Then collaborating with startups is very, very important because they provide with the wearable health devices. They come, all, come up with a lot of innovations. Uh, like telehealth platforms and uh, also mobile health apps. So these tools helps us in remote patient uh, monitoring and improving patient care. Then we have this uh, training through virtual reality and augmented reality. All this allows the nurses to practice complex procedures through, uh, in a simulated environment so that they it will help them to enhance the skill and they develop confidence. Then you have the online platform through which, as I already mentioned, uh, you can have webinars, online courses, so that you can keep the nurses updated. Then you have this uh, our advanced uh, electronic uh, health, I mean electronic health records, which is very very uh, useful. It helps in uh, integrating all the data from various sources and help the nurses to improve the care coordination, enables them to make informed decisions and in documentation is very So it, this technology comes in use here as well. And also the telehealth platform, you know, telemedicine is very uh, important. It allows the nurses to provide care remotely in the areas which cannot access healthcare. They can do it from uh, remotely by using telehealth medicine, telemedicine. Then coming to professional development, Again, it's, it's a, a collective thing of the government, public and the private sector. So they should provide clear career paths. They should provide support for the nurses by way of scholarships, by way of giving grants, and so that the nurses can do uh, research and uh, see how they can develop in the, uh, the career paths. And also uh, the private and public sector should to provide opportunities for nurses. The nurses working in the hospital just get stuck as staff nurses or some, some particular grade. They should allow them to move laterally 
and uh, you know give them managerial roles and you know, advanced practices and make them leaders in their in their uh, healthcare organizations so it is very important to create pathways for the nurses to advance them to advance into the leadership positions so not just uh, making them as a nurse just staff nurses and stagnate in wherever they are yeah i think you know you have touched upon many strategies and uh, the uh, again it was interesting to see you you telling about technology and i'm you know uh, use the technology quite a lot and uh, the they're talking about physician a assistant where the ai will help the physician to uh, you know um, sort of formulate diagnosis once you put in the data so i don't know how many you know of uh, us talk about you know ai nursing assistants so that is what we need and uh, technology is, is a major thing which we need to do it as a strategy and uh, i just you know take us quickly through you know how do we get there now what are the you know how do you think we can get there is there any other uh, ways by which you, you think we can get there faster yeah that's very true we cannot do it uh, as a in a single person or only one particular uh, area uh, is not enough you need collaboration and partnership in various one is the government and professional bodies who uh, have to develop policies that support nursing education and workforce development then we need to have collaboration the global best practices uh, i mean the global centers of excellence should uh, collaborate with the indian center the indian center should collaborate with the, uh, with the global uh, centers of excellence and learn the global best practices for them and incorporate them into the training and practices standards in india and uh, the nursing colleges and the hco uh, hco should they should collaborate with the training centers again here it is to update uh, and uh, the uh, the best practice and skills so that is very important as I, this here comes uh, uh, the concept of uh, finishing school of nursing finishing school where after the nurses finish the school they four to five months you give them intense intense training in the clinical practices to introduce them into the quality what is uh, you know importance of quality patient care introduce communication skills there and you know, make them ready for uh, working in a busy healthcare setup. So nowadays what's happening is they just directly go from the nursing colleges. So they do have uh, exposure to the hospital setup, but then you give them advanced clinical uh, skills training so that they are ready to uh, go into the busy uh, setup where they, there's so much of stress, they can start working with confidence and uh, with expertise. Then we have, uh, I think it's very important, there should be collaboration with nursing college and industry partnership. Here, the nursing college should align with the, uh, in the industry needs because the needs of the primary, secondary, and the tertiary care is very, very different. The primary, they just need basic preventive uh, care and the basic health needs has to be taken care of. And when it comes to secondary level, it's a little more advanced clinical training. When it comes to tertiary level, it, uh, there's even advanced training and also research uh, comes into play when it comes to tertiary care. So all this, uh, so the nursing colleges and the training, they should align with these needs of the different industries. So that's very, very important. And concluding my talk, I would like to say, what is that, how is that we're going to achieve all this? So again, to nurture respect, so it has to be our culture. Culture change is very, very important. So if you see abroad, nurses and doctors are treated equally. But that's, that doesn't happen in India. It's very, very, um, you know, like nurses are not treated equally. So it is a culture. It is our culture, which has been there, uh, you know, from uh, our college days. We've been into, you know, ingrained in this culture. So that has to change to bring about this change, which I'm talking about. And then there has to be equality. Equality, not only uh, in, in the remuneration, in all aspects. It has to be advocacy by the healthcare organizations, by making policy changes, there should be, you know, and uh, the rec nurses should be recognized for the, the value they're providing for healthcare uh, system, the healthcare system. And then they have to be given leadership opportunities. How can we do this? Again, collaborating with uh, institutions like IAM, so they can provide leadership training for the nurses so that they can be, uh, you know, they can come uh, play key roles as leaders. Then work-life balance, as I told you, is very, very important to make sure that the nursing profession is looked, uh, looked up upon. For that, I, one example I can tell is, I mean, basically you need to develop uh, policies and promote work-life balance. How do you do that? One example is hospitals having uh, crashes. 
for the uh, you know to take care of the children of the nurses so when they come and leave the uh, children in the crash they'll be at peace and they can give the whole uh, the whole hearted work uh, in the hospital for patient care so that is one example of you know helping the nurses in uh, having a work life balance and uh, last but not the least is to promote educational excellence this is again a collaborative effort of the government the nursing uh, college of india and nursing council of india the nursing colleges healthcare organization and the training center it is a collective everybody has to uh, put in the effort to bring about the change in the education for the nurses so i am so glad I'm so thank uh, thank you dr pari for giving this opportunity to share my vision to share our vision skills for med vision with uh, with uh, others here in this platform and i'm glad for people who attended i'm sure all of you will be a part of this journey in achieving our vision so i wish uh, we could have more we'll be, we'll be, we will be having more sessions on this this is this is a beginning so we have to continuously be working at it as uh, dr pari said it's not a 3 or 5 year goal it's going to be a 23 years uh, goal down the line so we have to work towards it thank you so much for this opportunity thank you rognitya i think uh, it's fantastic very inspiring uh, so how do we bring about the change you spoke about you uh, know to respected as equals and of course uh, equal pay or at least see the thing is once uh, you know the uh, doctor finishes mbbs and uh, say uh, for an emergency physician wants to be, uh, join as an emergency physician they get you know about a lack of rupees and it is for this lack of rupees that the nurses go to the you know uh, gcc countries right or european countries so that is where we are missing the boat you know that's uh, that's where really we are missing the boat and i think we should address that and of course leadership role work life balance and you know education was is also important so thank you so much and i'm sure a lot of people will you know i have i see a lot of nursing leaders here yeah. so so uh, thank you all so much for joining us i think it's been you know so gratifying for us to share this i think uh, this is you uh, know very uh, thing we've been keeping to ourselves i thought let us share it and we will uh, spread the message and i'm sure it will become a moment in uh, you know a few years time and it will gather momentum so that is our hope so with that uh, let us you know end this uh, webinar thank you so much right bye, -bye.